Every painting journey starts with a single brush stroke. Yeah, I'm learning to paint having never painted before. Hi, I'm Julian and this is Libby and we are from Box Meeples. So, painting, miniature painting, that's something we've all thought about doing. <laughs> but uh, it might be quite imposing and quite intimidating for someone who's never done it before, which is the situation you're in. Yes, I do feel a bit sort of overwhelmed and like my ability is not going to match up with what I have in my head um, and I don't really know where to start so I've been a bit too sort of I suppose scared to kind of delve into it, it you, you don't want to ruin things or anything like that but I've been encouraged seeing how you have sort of started painting you I think you started as a child but then hadn't painted for a long time until yeah. last year so yeah, I used to have, like many people my age, a whole Warhammer army. So I started off probably when I was about, I think, 10 or 11, mm -hmm. um, painting using the old style techniques. So, you know, using a base coat, doing dry brushing highlights and then wash. Um, and I was okay at it. I'm not going to pretend I'm, I'm award-winning <laughs> painter. Um, but I hadn't done it for a very, very long time. Uh, until the UK Games Expo last year. Where, where you then said you were never going to do yeah, it again. Yeah, so I, um, <laughs> I started painting just because I had like demo stations there and um, before I went I was quite excited about trying it again because I'd seen all these uh, miniatures online and people were paying, you know, board games with painted miniatures and I thought, well that looks great, yeah, yeah. I'd have to do that. Uh, and I sat down and I spent two hours painting and I was entirely pleased with the results, it was okay. But I thought, well, that's just too long to spend on every single miniature. Because some of the games we've got have, you know, 30, 40, 50 miniatures sometimes. But then things changed. Yeah, I mean, at that point I was thinking, oh yeah, I still do quite fancy giving painting a try. But if you're talking about two, three hours plus a miniature, then I just don't have the time for that. Well, I discovered at that point the slap chop. Oh, well. Now this is this is kind of a buzzword that's going around quite a lot on the internet, particularly in kind of painting circles. Um, and basically, it's painting a figure, undercoating it, highlighting it with a dry brush technique, and then using uh, what are called contrast paints, or we prefer uh, iron paint to speed paint. So what you're doing is creating basically a black and white version of a miniature. It's similar to the kind of classic painting techniques that always existed. Um, and then you then basically colour the black and white version. So you have a very thin paint, a speed paint or a contrast paint that goes on the top of it. And the beauty of that is all your shading is already there. So you put a single thin layer of colour on there and then all that shading shows through and you end up with a finished miniature. And the promise is it's quick, it's one coat and you can get a model finished in half an hour. Which is what I would teach you. Yeah, I mean, it sounds to me like I'm going to need to be good at my shading, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so, but we chose to start the painting with a game that was kindly gifted to us from Dice Heads, a game called Zoom Trialis. I um, picked this one because I have got to be the dashing dinos, and who doesn't want to start painting with dinos? This is a game that we're going to be playing mm -hmm. with your girls, so they also have the Raging Rabbits, and the Barbie Vets, and they are going to give a go at painting as well. And so I thought that because it's going to be a bit of a family affair, this seemed like a fun place to start for all of us. And with these miniatures, I think that they're going to be quite a good option because of we're going to want them quite bright and colourful, relatively blocky. So for a first try, um, it just seems like a good a good place to start. I know there are some games that I would also like to paint, like. Um, Flame crown, mm -hmm. and like Rising Sun, that has those massive crate with miniatures and things in there. Um, but perhaps this is sort of with that sort of blocky, more cartoon like styling in them, I feel like maybe this is a little bit more achievable for my first project. Yeah, and this is a great family game. So I've got I've got a foxes. I don't know if you've seen any of our recent videos, you may know why I was so keen to have foxes. Um, but this is a basically a simplified family version of those kind of miniature skirmish games so not dissimilar to the kind of warhammer games that, that are so popular um, but yeah as you said these miniatures are relatively simple to paint block colors and very open so there's no kind of complex details these are also what's great about these is they're pre-assembled so you haven't got to then construct these miniatures by you know, taking them off sprues they're all pre-built and we're going to yeah use some simple techniques to try and paint these 
Now, it's important to be kind of realistic about what results you're going to achieve. And I think the reason that perhaps you're so intimidated and that many are intimidated is because you look on Instagram and YouTube and you see these fantastic miniatures that are painted using 200 pound airbrushes by people who paint a miniature probably every single day, if not more so. But so in a year, they painted 300 of these things. Yeah, and I'm sure practice makes perfect and I'm not expecting the first miniature I paint to be the greatest art piece that I ever do. And I'm sure that it will be a learning curve and I will get better and better and understand techniques and how the paint works the more that I paint. But it would be nice to feel like I can look back at them and think, oh, for a first go, not bad. Yeah. And that's where I've sort of set my expectations. And, and I know you've said before that um, you were encouraged by something that Jeff said at Foster Gleeful when you were talking about painting yeah. and things. He'd said that the thing is you look at the miniature from this far away on a table. You're not looking at the miniature here and or in the way that you are when you're kind of, you know, putting a close up in a video and doing a, a turnaround to see all those details. That's not how you use the miniature. So although personally, I'm probably going to see flaws on those kinds of levels actually i'm going to have something that's going to look great on the table at the playable distance yeah um so. I'll, I'll link to that video below because it's such a kind of inspiring video i really enjoyed it and it helped me because yes you're not going to get these perfect results but whatever you do it's going to look better than just plain plastic and in fact it's going to probably gonna make your games easier to play because you'll be able to identify the miniatures easier on the board so we should probably start this process and as i said at the beginning we're going to be using a slap chop technique now, we're so going to... what's that start with? So, to start off, we need to undercoat these miniatures because these are plastic miniatures, like the majority of miniatures you get nowadays. And the reality is, if you start painting directly onto these, particularly using contrast paints or speed paints, it's not going to stick. So, you need to, first of all, lay a base, an undercoat, on which you can then put colours. Now, you can get these undercoats at, yeah, hobby shops, at, uh, you know, games workshop, build them. And they are sort of 12, 13 pounds. And I would strongly advise you reining back in how much you spend until you know you're actually going to enjoy the process of painting and you're going to be pleased with yeah. the result. Because you can probably spend 60 pounds buying elaborate paint sets, half of which the colours you're not going to use, very expensive paint brushes, very expensive undercoats, and then find out we don't actually enjoy it. So I'd start quite simple. Uh, in um, so craft shops or sometimes even in kind of discount shops you can get just white spray paint you use on cars mm. that works perfectly for this as long as you're doing thin coats from about 30 centimeters away trying to evenly spread out your paint you're probably going to be fine so at this stage you have to cover everything yep uh, this isn't a, a sort of shading or anything this is just literally uh make sure everything was covered so that the paint will stick yes so and what way. we're going to do is we're going to we're going to undercoat them in gray now you might still go well why aren't you undercoating in white if you want to look bright and colorful well that's going to be the next step this gray is going to act as a shadow layer mm -hmm. upon which we are then going to add white at a later stage so if you start at white you've got no way of going darker or no way of going lighter so you really have to start at the kind of the second stage you want to do now on the slap chop technique they say start at black and do a then layer of grey and a layer of white. We're going to skip that process because we want this to be bright and colourful and cartoony. If we're doing something more gritty, yes, we'd start at black and then we'd have a really strong shadow, but we, we're not going to do that here. So the simple first step will be undercoating these in grey. So we have undercoated our little miniatures um, and got that ready to go. So the next stage, I think you said, was basically giving that sort of highlights, yeah. shadows, things we're going to do a white. Yeah. Right. So we have the grey miniature here. This is now undercoated, so we know the paint is going to stick. That's super crazy process. Mm -hmm. Just spraying from a distance. Leave it to dry a sufficient amount of time, which is a mistake I've made in the past. Yeah. 
every stage of this you want it to dry <laughs> because if it doesn't you're going to get results you're not anticipating so now what we're going to do on top of these is a process called dry brushing any ideas what that would be well i assume we're using a paintbrush that mm -hmm. does not have water on it and just has a tiny bit of paint and then we kind of shush shush, shush over it yeah so we're gonna get we've got cheap acrylic white paint again don't go expensive on this you don't need anything i use literally the cheapest white paint i can find uh usually at a discount shop usually like a pound for a big old tube of this um and what we're going to do is we're going to dip the brushes into this white paint and then rub it on a piece of kitchen paper until all of the paint has disappeared the reality is the paint hasn't completely gone because no. it's very deep into the recesses of that brush so then when we apply it to the miniature where all the highest raised bits of the miniatures are are going to brush against that paint that's submerged in the bristles and that's only going to therefore paint the highest layers so you still have this gray bit underneath but on top of that will be lots of white it's a kind of process you've seen similar to the kind of sun drop you see yeah well, what i'm not sure of is you know how far do you go how white how gray yeah you know we're talking about sun kissed or we're talking about sun baked in terms of like how much light you're kind of <laughs> the hand trying to give it you know what what's too far um probably the... this is the bit that i think i lose kind of like well this is going to set the the kind of standard for the whole of the mitch mm -hmm. obviously the more white you're going to put on here the more bright the miniature is going to be but at the expense of that that you're going to get less contrasting colors because the way these uh, are paint speed paint work is by basically just layering up and they're going to run to the recesses now if the recesses are already dark that's going to make the paint replacing upon it darker too so yeah it's a case of working out where the sun is going to be and maybe focusing on that if you want to get really fancy but really just going over the whole thing and trying to basically draw pick out all of the highlights this dry brush process is going to do that it's going to pick out all of the way sections which we are then going to color so i think it's the, the 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 next step and this is when you're going to see a big shift and you're going to really now see the detail in these miniatures and it's worth also noting that with certain board game miniatures there's no point comparing them against ones like this which are designed for painting certain board games are going to come with with miniatures that are designed for playing with so they're not going to have as much detail in this but that doesn't mean you, you can't paint them and you still are, you're going to get better results and not paint them but with certain designed miniatures particularly these range from um, from dice heads you're going to really see all the detail that are in here that you probably haven't even seen just by looking at them in the plastic version so this is going to really see a, quite a seismic shift in what you expect in a few miniatures. So next stage, dry brushing.
So we've done the process of dry brushing. Was that what you expected? Um, kind of. I wasn't expecting her to have to sort of dip the brush in so much and then like wipe as much off mm-hmm. um, before doing it. But the whole kind of like brushily over section was kind of as expected. Just the sort of process I suppose was slightly, slightly tweaked from yeah. what I had in my head. Now so that's kind of why I said to get the cheapest white paint you can because <laughs> there is quite a lot of wastage really. Obviously. Yeah. So, Dunk in your brush and you get rid of the jar shot. Uh, and it is a gradual building up of process. Yeah, which I didn't always do. I, I, I feel like, I, you know, I've learned some lessons. Obviously, this is my first time painting. Um, I wasn't expecting to be perfect straight off. I was quite surprised by the amount of detail and things that actually come up and come out for life. Like even um, this dude has this cute um, tail and you can see all the scaling on it now with the white there. Um, but then I had attempted on a couple of them, this one included, in fact, some of the bits where he's got some bones on his neck and his teeth and things like that. I thought, oh, I'll put a bit extra white on there. Um, kind of later on, I thought I'd do a little mini dip into the discard section just to sort of brighten some little things and thought, I'll, and then I'll be able to sort of shush them out a little bit. Um, and that was probably a bit of a mistake, um, particularly on one of the other figures where I sort of thought I tried to whiten the edges of uh, these sort of, yeah, horned and teethy bits. Um, and then I tried to blind in and I've just ended up over whitening the whole of the black car. Could this be a case of trying to run before you could walk? I, I mean, yeah, and this is what I do in life in general. I don't like to make things easy for myself and I like to sort of, I felt like we kind of, done that with this because you know normally i would go straight in for the biggest most exciting monster from rising sun and think that i can make it the most amazing miniature ever having barely ever painted in my life but i could do it but i haven't done that but uh, i'm you know i'm happy that i've made mistakes here and this is going to be a game that you know however well they're painted they're going up against painting that your girls have done and things like that so i think they're going to look on a par and no matter what mistakes that make. I think it's impressive how quickly these look good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and you don't really, as you're doing it, you're thinking, well, this, this looks no different. Um, you know, had I actually done anything, it's only when you compare it to an undry brush one, you go, well, that's, that's quite a big difference. Even though now, obviously we can't because we've done the whole thing. Uh, if you compare it to just a plastic, you're like, well, that's, that's night and day difference just from this very simple process of undercoating and then dry brushing. Them. Yeah, and I feel like, again, like I recently got the Great Wall from Awakened Realms and I got their um, sun drop version and obviously the miniatures come in a certain flare colours and then they've got the sun drop effect on them. I feel like by doing an, uh, this sort of thing, maybe even doing a sort of um, like a, a darkish speed paint colour and just sweeping across it, you would have that really defined, really good look at, you know, probably a little flotchy than I paid for the sun drop there. But I mean, I love it and it's consistent and I'm happy. And I, I think that when you have that many miniatures, that you're only going to sun drop and not paint paint. Do you want to spend all the time doing that's that? That's the point, is there? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a balance. Yeah, you can obviously... You, it's much cheaper to paint them yourselves, but it's yeah. a process that takes some time. But this is very, very quick. Yeah, it's even good yeah. Deal. And um, we've only got four miniatures each in this, so you do feel like you can spend the time kind of thinking about what colours you want and uh, and spend a bit more time on it than sort of feel the kind of mass production yes. line that you might with some other games. And besides, they're all individual figures and all the mm-hmm. same, so we can actually be that like, focus on each one. And actually, colouring is what we're going to be doing in the next video. Yes, so that's the exciting bit. Yes. So do join us on the next video if you want to see how the speed paint range is really going to kind of accentuate all the kind of highlighting that we've established here with the dry brushing and the undercoat. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how that effect is, particularly on my pterodactyl here, these wings. I can't wait to see how that um, sort of dips into any crevices and any shadows and things, how they're going to work, having seen what you've done before, because I could see not use those paints at all yet. So exciting stuff. Yeah. And uh, obviously, thank you to Dice Heads for providing the miniatures. If you want to get hold of your own copy of of Zintalis, have on over to their website and they'll be able to direct you to where the best place to buy that is. A thank you as well to Army Painter for providing the paints that we are using yes. in this process. 
And of course, if you are looking to buy things from Army Painter or any other board games even, um, we use our friendly local game store here in the southeast of England, which is Chaos Cards. Um, and they do have a nice range of Army Painter paintings yeah. actually there. Um, you can use your discount code, which we have in the description here to get you a few pennies off. Yeah, so uh, hopefully you'll join us next time because we are Julian Livy. We post board game videos at least twice a week, always on YouTube. And next time we're going to be painting them. Yeah. I can't so wait to get them all coloured. So I hope you'll join us for that. Thanks as always for watching. Bye.